As promised, today we are gonna go through all the gimbals in the last two years and I'm gonna give you my breakdown, my recommendations, and a couple of tips and words of wisdom at the very end. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Quick disclaimer, all of these gimbals are mine, so not sponsored, personally owned. I'm gonna give you my honest review, no BS. And if you wanna see in-depth review of these gimbals, I think I've left a link in the description. If not, go check out my main page, okay? By the way, I will be releasing a gimbal tutorial in coming weeks, so stay tuned if you wanna see that. All right, so let's go from the smallest to the largest. The Juring Smooth Q3, what I like and what I don't like. Small, compact and light, perfect for those users who like to shoot with their mobile phones. Let me put mine on. One switch, turn it on, and you're good to go. And it does come with the usual modes that you see in all of these gimbals, so no big changes there. Now, one thing is that it does come with a selfie light, which is actually touch sensor. So I just wanna show you. If I touch, it turns on. And if you want, you can turn this around so you can face your object or face yourself. Now, and of course, you can also link it to the Juring app. So through Bluetooth, you can use the app to control the phone to take shoots, uh, zoom in, zoom out, and you can also do a couple of time lapses as well. So pretty much the same feature you see across the board. Here's my take on the gimbal. It's a good gimbal, but if you're using one of these latest phones, like the iPhone or one of the new phones, the stability on these phones are very, very good. Now, do you really need a gimbal for one of these? My honest opinion, Probably not, unless you're walking around a lot and if you're doing selfie and you're doing vlogs and where you're actually using this, I will probably recommend something like this. But otherwise, I've been trying to use this phone to shoot a lot of shots just handheld and it is very, very smooth. I will probably save that couple hundred dollars, get a really good microphone rather than a gimbal to start off with. Uh, but if you're a long-term user, if you're handhelding, if you're walking a lot, doing selfies, if you're doing tours, yes, having one of these is very helpful. Okay, so let me put this way. By the way, I'm doing a hand phone, hand shot tutorial as well, so I'll be showing that uh, very soon. Okay, next up in size is the Juring M2S. Now, this came out earlier this year. I did a review, so go check it out. Uh, my honest opinion, this is actually catered for people who are in the semi-compact camera industry uh, with a mirrorless camera. So I've actually fit a Sony S7 mirrorless camera with a decent sized lens. I think it was a Tamron from memory. So it wasn't a super heavy setup. Uh, the clearance is very small. So as you can see, the gimbal arm, it's not a big gimbal. So it's very small, it's very compact, perfect for traveling, very light. So if you have a compact camera like the Canon GX, or you have a Sony ZV or the 6000 series, this is a pretty good gimbal. It's very good, bang for buck. The gimbal itself uses the latest algorithm from 2022, so it's very stable. Uh, and it also has the same selfie light that we saw in the previous gimbal. In terms of functions and features, very similar across all of these gimbals. So you have the normal pan follow, lock, focus, uh, as well as the vortex and POV. Now quality wise, this is not the best, right? You've got fairly cheap plastic here. Uh, and then overall the hand grip, it feels like it's fairly hard. So it's not even gel based, it's just a very hard composite. It could be even a sticker, right, with a pattern groove. So they try to save money here. Now, if you're like me, you can purchase one of these quick release plates. I think this came extra. Put it on your camera, and if you wanna shoot, just put it back, just like that. Very cool. Okay, now we're moving up in size and price. So this is Juring's Crane M, let me see. I'm just getting confused. This is the M3, I believe. It's just too many, I'm getting confused. This actually came out before the M2S. And this sits right in between the Juring M2S and the Jury Weeble 3, which just came out. So it sits right here in between in terms of price and functionality. What does that mean? All right, so in terms of features, pretty much the same. It comes with a selfie light, it comes with the same function mode, the paint fellows, the, the lock. In terms of clearance, it is a little bit bigger than the M2S. The light itself is adjustable. There is a knob on the side which you can press to adjust the brightness and the color temperature. Now, don't buy this for the lights. Neither of these gimbals, do not buy it for the lights. It's a fairly, I wouldn't say gimmick, it does work in certain situations, but the lights is fairly hard, okay? So if you're low light and if you want something to light up the subject, this is a good emergency fix, but it's not something you wanna shoot everything with. In terms of clearance and gimbal weight capabilities, I tested this on my Sony MS3 with a GM camera. So it's, it's about 1.5 kilos. It's a little bit more capable than the M2S, but I think the extra clearance is what you need for a mirrorless camera. If you're going anything bigger than a mirrorless or if you're using a fairly heavy setup, I will probably steer away from this, um, but so far so good. The gimbal is actually fairly capable, okay? Um, so anything bigger than what I just mentioned, I wouldn't recommend.
Now we're getting to the mid-weights, okay? So we've got the Durin Weeble 3 and last year's Durin Weeble 2. Now also in the middleweight, we have the Ronin SC2. In fact, we also have this year's IRS3. All right, so we've got four middleweights and I think we've got a very saturated market. These companies are putting out things every single year. So keep that in mind when you upgrade, whether or not to upgrade every single year. If you're sensible, you're probably not gonna do that. But we're gonna go through the features and, and the capabilities, right? In terms of price, I'm not gonna go through the price because obviously last year's will be cheaper in the secondary market. So you can go to eBay, you can go to Facebook market, you can go to whatever you wanna go. You know, I'm not gonna sell you anything here. So all I will ask is a like to the video and that's it. Let's go through last year's first actually. This is the Weeble 2. It came with one of these screens, all right? It's a fairly big screen. And you know, if you use the active track and if you use it to follow focus and if you wanna use it uh, just to monitor your menu subjects, that's very helpful. But apart from that, I felt it was kind of useless. It was a great feature when it came out and it gave a lot of hype, but you know, over time, I feel like this screen, it actually drains a lot of battery. So I don't really use this as much, uh, to be honest, because for me, gimbal, main purpose is to shoot a good camera and I use my camera screen the most. On the side, we've got a knob, which you can spin or focus. This is basically a knob we see on a lot of gimbals these days, except the design's on the side. So what that means, this gimbal is a two-hand operator. So you got one hand on the grip, and the second hand on the knob. Some people prefer to shoot like this, you have more control, some people don't. Some people usually shoot like this and then just control with the knob at the front, like you see with the other gimbals that we see these days. This is personal preference, okay? But personally, I like a one hand gimbal, so I don't usually do this. Uh, I feel like it does add a little bit of jitter in the shots. Now in terms of the weight, it is three kilos. I wasn't able to test the max payload. All of these gimbals I've tested on my S3 with my GM lens, 2470. So that was around 1.5 kilos. Now, if you have something around 1.5 or two kilos, I think one of these gimbals, not a problem. Across the board, not a problem. What's different is the weight that's been calculated. It's using the older algorithm. So sometimes you see areas of vibration or sometimes you see when uh, the camera tilts over, you need to restart the gimbal by turning it off and on. Whereas this year, all you have to do is double click on the trigger button and it'll reset and recenter and you can go away and shoot again. So I think that's an improvement uh, from last year and this year. And one other thing to mention is there is a mode switch button in last year's model and that's very very good in terms of feel and quality wise i feel like this is actually fairly good all right if you have this i don't feel like you should upgrade to this year's weeble 3. in terms of weight i feel like it's around 1.3 1.4 uh, don't ask me how i know because i've tested a lot of these things but comparing to this year let's have a look so this year they've actually gone back I feel like they've gone back to minimize the design to something more small, more compact, more focused on the actual functionality of gimbal itself. And that's to shoot a stable video rather than give you gimmick stuff. But we'll go through that a little bit. Now this comes with the accessory package. So you have a wrist support as well as a uh, hand grip. Now this hand grip obviously isn't as good as last year's. Look at the size of this beefy guy, All right? He also has quarter inch mounts and a cold shoe. Whereas this year, this is foam. So it doesn't give you a lot of confidence, um, but you know, you're saving a bit of money. Uh, another thing to realize this grip is actually in the middle, right? You can see it's right in the middle, right? It's very well balanced, whereas this one is on the side. So your camera is gonna be tilted a little bit to the left or right, depends on where you put this hand grip. Now, one thing I really like the design is that the battery is placed on the bottom. This gives you two benefits. One is to support your hand. Second, most important, is the weight distribution has been lowered. That means it gives you a much more balanced hand health. You're not feeling top heavy, especially if you have a heavy camera. And right now, I feel like this is, even though it's around the same weight, this feels lighter because the weight is actually lower. Now this year they've also added a selfie light as well as a directional camera. Both of these are good to have, but definitely do not buy for these, all right? The micro itself, I feel like it's a little bit muffled, but it is better than what you have on your camera itself. Obviously, if you have a wireless, use that, okay? Once again, this light as well, good for backup or emergencies, but don't just depend on it. But one of the big changes is the quick release plate. Now, it's using a double step up plate, so that's similar to the DJI design, which means you can quickly release, let me show you. You can quickly release your camera from the gimbal, shoot, and then just put it back on. Super easy. And the extra height gives you clearance for the larger lenses. So I really like that.
Now moving on to the DJI, we've got the RSC here, okay? You can feel straight away after holding this, this is a little bit top heavy, but you know, it's nothing uncomfortable. Now the draw card for the RSC2 is that the way it was designed last year, right? It's, it snaps in half, so that gives you two options. It's compact in size, so you can pack it in your backpack. Now, second of all, you can shoot it like this. Now, this feels very top heavy, so you definitely need an accessory to hold it up top, but you can shoot it definitely like this. So, you know, like a shotgun uh, or handheld, just like that. Okay, so that's one of the draw cards of last year's design. But I think people have complained that the longevity of shooting it like this in terms of ergonomics and, and quality wise. So I think they've changed the design this year to remove this. Now in terms of quality, I think DJI has always been a very good quality uh, overall company. It's just that they're a little bit more expensive. The ecosystem, you know, once you're in the DJI, it is very good. The menu screen, uh, very easy to follow. Fairly similar to the Jireen, all right? It was one of those uh, black and white screens where all the necessary information was there. On the side, we have two NATO rails. So if you have NATO rails accessory, you can put that on. Capability or the weight wise, it's around the same as the Weeble. So I think you have no problem going with either of these. Uh, in terms of battery, I feel like the Jury has a longer battery and that's comparing to last year's Weeble 3, provided you don't turn on the screen. Um, but you know, you can always just quick charge. All of these comes with PD quick charge, takes about no longer than two hours to get a full charge and you can use it for a fairly, you know, around five, six hours decent. Now the can grip is gel based like all their green balls. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, we've heard and we've seen uh, these things kind of peel. Uh, and so it's something to keep in mind. But one thing to keep in mind, this is first generation. So like all first generations, you're gonna see some bugs and sometimes the calculations with the algorithm. So, you know, um, overall, very stable. I don't think I have much to complain apart from the price compared to the other gimbals in the market. If you can get a good, decent second hand, I think this is a fairly good choice. Now, compare that to this year's RS3. Quality wise, they've gone with a different base plate and the color scheme is very similar to last year's RS2. Now, the battery have gone smaller in size, so the whole thing is smaller and more compact. And instead of being snappable in half, it is now detachable. Now, this battery is not swappable with the new RS3 Pro because uh, it is different size. A couple of differences upgrade, apart from the size and the battery and the way it's designed, uh, we've got a bigger screen. This is 1.8 inch OLED colored touch screen. So they've redesigned the whole UI system and I think it's very intuitive, very good that DJI has done that. I think this is the best menu out of all of these gimbals. Um, so very quick and easy to access the functions and modes. And on the sides, we have a mode dial. This is a newly added feature that was not available in any of their previous generations. In fact, the Weeble 3, they've taken away the mode dial that was on the original, here you go, let me show you. That was on the original Weeble 2. I think as always good having a quick dial, it just makes it a little bit easier and accessible. A couple of other features, one of the draw cards is that the gimbal itself now automatically unlocks and that is super convenient. Except for the time when you need to put on a new lens and then readjust the gimbals. When you turn it off, everything locks, you have to unlock it again. Uh, luckily in the menus, you can turn that function off. Other than that, every time you shoot, press a button, turn it on, you start shooting. If you wanna move to another location, turn it off, it locks itself and you're good to go. Super, super handy. Another function is it comes with Bluetooth. Now, unlike other gimbals here, so if your camera is capable, remember it's capable, go to the website, check if your camera is capable. If it is, I use the Sony S7, it works perfectly fine. All you have to do is sync it once with the Bluetooth function and every time you turn on the camera and the gimbal, it will automatically pair and you can use the functions here to record or capture uh, video or photos. So that makes it really easy. So just one man operator and one hand, you can control everything and you got the dials at the front. Now this is the combo pack. It comes with a follow focus as well as an additional hand grip. So this is extra, right? And if you need that, definitely go purchase that. If you're not, then the basic version only comes with the gimbal itself. Uh, it's around 1.3 kilos, so very similar weight. But like I said, it feels a little bit top heavy. Now, looking at the top, the quick plate, is very similar to last year's. One thing they've improved is that they're using the same RS2 style uh, gear levers to adjust the front and back of the quick release plate. I really like that feature. It gives you that precise minute change uh, which is needed to adjust the weight. I wish they had it on all three gimbals but unfortunately only on the quick release plate. It is a step up quick release so you can remove this, shoot. So similar to during and last year's model. So. Uh, that's no changes there. So out of these middle ways, I think, you know, I've covered most of these. If you wanna see a quick comparison, go check out my video of the Weeble 3 and the RS3. Uh, a lot of differences there. Uh, but overall, look, here's my recommendation. 
if you're someone who's in the uh, professional film industry, if you're a one-man team or just a few people, uh, and if you're using mirrorless camera with a lot of different lenses, the middle way are the definitely choice to go, but which one? Okay, so if you already purchased what you have from last year, say if you got the RS2C or you have the Weeble 2, to be honest, I don't think it justifies the extra price to upgrade to this year's model because given the way the market is going, they're gonna release another one next year anyways. So probably wait for a couple of years and then upgrade. Now, if you don't have this, my recommendation is the RS3 if you have the extra dollar. With that extra money, what you get is the auto lock and unlock function of the gimbals, the Bluetooth functionality, a bigger screen, the overall build quality. So I think that is worth the extra money. But if you don't have the money, look, Jiring is a very good choice. But if you can find a second hand or a lower price or a discounted promotion sale from the Weeble version, uh, the Weeble 3 I think is a fairly good choice. Um, in terms of stability, both are very similar. I don't feel like both are very different. Now one last heavyweight that I haven't tested or I haven't mentioned much is the S2. Okay, don't want to confuse you guys too much. This came out last year. This is the daddy of all of these gimbals in terms of weight. Uh, it is made from carbon fiber on the gimbals. It just looks super sexy. Weight-wise, it's very similar uh, compared to all of these gimbals, but it can withstand a lot heavier loads. So if you use a cinema camera or you know like an FX6, uh, something like that, or a Red Komodo, this is definitely something that you want to consider. All of these are just you know not in the equation. But if you're already using cameras like this, I don't think I should be able to tell you which gimbal to use. You were obviously already invested in a heavy setup. This is probably a good bang for buck because one, it is from last year, so you definitely can find a good quality in the secondhand marketplace. Do you need the extra feature from the RS3? Probably not. If this is what lasts you a long time, a couple of years, as long as you protect the grip, protect the case, uh, use it carefully, then I think you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, so in terms of the way the algorithms calculated, I think it's still pretty good. I, I feel like the updated algorithm, you know, it doesn't show that that much of a difference in terms of stability, right? Uh, it does make a difference when it comes to if your camera has a you know, weight distribution issue, uh, it's able to calculate a little bit better. And when, if it tips over, you can reset just by tapping the trigger button twice. And I feel that that's pretty good. But in terms of overall shot quality, I don't see a big difference. End of the day, one, comes down to a budget, two, comes down to a setup. Just to recap, if you have a phone camera, use one of these. So this is pretty good. Um, there's others out there. I think they all shoot pretty much the same quality videos. Now, moving up is the MS2. Use this if you have a compact camera, something small, uh, like the Sony 6000 series or the ZV-1, uh, also the Canon GX, I believe. So all of these are good on this. If you're using a mirrorless with a heavy setup lens, I wouldn't skip with this. All right, and then there's the M3, right? I feel like if you're already using the M3, why not step up to the uh, the Weeble 3? Except that if you're traveling a lot, this is compact and you're only using one setup or two setup and you know that you're not gonna upgrade in the future, then this is actually pretty good. But if you are gonna upgrade, then you're going to the middleweights. And like I said, when it comes down to budget, if you have the money, go for the newer RS3. If you don't, the old version, any of these is very, very good. And if you're going for a cinema camera, hey, the RS2, big boy. Of course, the RS3 Pro, but I don't have that with me, and I can't compare that with you, but obviously, as the saying goes, if you have the money, RS3 Pro is probably the one for you. Hopefully, I have not confused you even further. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a message on Instagram. Uh, I usually do live updates over there or just answer your DMs. I'm George. If you like this video, if it's helpful, please, please leave a like. That's all I ask. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, so everything I say is from my personal experience. If you want to see full detailed reviews of these, I've left a link in the description, and I will be releasing a tutorial on using a gimbal as well as shooting things with your phone. I'm George. I'll see you next one. Peace.